This tutorial will explain the main ways to control an external device from the Carrera and Cayenne switchers. These examples will use the Clip Store option to explain the possible control methods as it is a popular option to many switchers. The device control methods described can be used with any external device. Just keep in mind that some older machines running earlier protocols may not have all of the capabilities of the Clip Store. Installing the Clip Store also enables it to be used with external device control as well as with the Clip Store control menu. The Clip Store installation is covered in another tutorial. The main ways to control an external device from the Cayenne and Carrera switcher that are covered in this tutorial are 1. Directly from the Device Control Menu 2. From the Switcher's System Bar 3. From EMEM using Register Recalls or with Timelines and 4. Using Macros There are additional ways to control an external device from a Cayenne panel that are not available from a Carrera panel. These additional Cayenne control methods that are not covered in this tutorial are 5. The multifunction module, single and multi modes, 6. The optional device control module, and 7. Using Q memory from the device control module. This tutorial only covers the device control methods common to both switcher models. It is assumed that the external device to be controlled is already cabled into the switcher and is operational. The device's control menu provides direct control of up to five machines at a time. One device is provided with full controls, while the other four devices have only basic controls. It is easy to exchange any of the machines assigned to basic control with the one assigned full control using the swap button. The device name pad shows the current device assigned to each control section and selecting it provides access to the device picker menu to assign a different device. If a device is offline, the green status bar will turn red and the control buttons will become grayed out. The Enables tab provides individual enable controls for any installed external device. The enable controls do not affect the Clip Store operation. The timecode mode selection is, however, used for all external devices, including the Clip Store. The default Clip Store timecode mode is tape time. The other timecode modes should only be used if timecode is present on all clips being used. The control section with full control provides all standard machine control functions. The standard machine control functions are play, stop, rewind, fast forward, jog forward and back, record and record time, cue and mark, as well as variable play speed. Additional controls for loop, auto start, and off-air advance are also available if supported by the device. A progress bar shows the current position of the video playback within the clip. A timecode display shows the current timecode number using the timecode received from the device. A program clip window shows the name of the current clip loaded in the channel. Selecting the program clip window will call up a list of folders and the clips available within the selected folder. Selecting a different folder will show the clips within that folder. List view shows a greater number of clips but by name only whereas thumbnail view will show the clip thumbnails if available. The current folder can also be searched to help in locating clips in folders with large directories. Refresh allows the clip display to be updated when new clips are transferred into the device. Pressing done will return the display to the control menu as will selecting a clip, which also loads the clip as well as returns you to the control menu. 
the preset clip window will show the clip name if a preset clip has been selected. Selecting the double arrows will swap between the program and preset clips. Another way to control a device is from the control panel system bar. The number of system bar device control windows varies from one window on a 2ME Carrera panel to six on a 4ME Cayenne panel. The right hand window follows the designated cross point bus. The default bus to follow is the preset bus. The follow bus assignment can be changed by holding down the previous and next buttons together while selecting a new bus for the control window to follow. In the follow window, whatever machine is selected on the assigned bus will be controlled by the follow window controls. Any other windows on the system bar can be set to control a dedicated machine from the control panel. On these dedicated control windows, the device being controlled is assigned by first holding down the previous and next buttons together, then selecting the device on the assignment bus. The controls provided on the system bar are load queue and play besides the previous and next buttons. The previous and next buttons allow a user to step through a clip list and then using load to load a clip. Once loaded, the clip can be played or stopped with the play button or requeued with the queue button. The queue point is determined by the mark settings available in the control menu. The play button will turn red if the clip is on air. If the device being controlled does not support clip names, then the current time code will be displayed instead. For EMEM control, external devices are controlled using timeline events. These events are turned on or off in the timeline events menu prior to learning an effect or inserting a keyframe in a timeline. To control these events, it is necessary to know how the EMEM system is set up to control them. To determine how the events can be controlled, refer to the user setup, suite prefs submenu, and select the EMEM prefs tab. Select the device clip store button and select the desired machine from the list. The clip store channels are normally assigned to the master EMEM control levels miscellaneous 1 through miscellaneous 4. All other external devices are normally assigned to the miscellaneous 16 level, usually labeled EXT. Note that any machine control can be assigned to any level, made definable or set as not assigned. Changes in the menu will affect how external devices can be controlled. A clip store channel can be controlled using events in the Devices Timeline Events menu or from triggers in the Image Store Replay and Record Clips menu using the KF or Keyframe Triggs button. To save confusion, it is best to use either one control method or the other although both are active. The events available in the Timeline Events menu are Load, turn Load on to read the clip name that is currently loaded in the selected device. If this trigger is active on an EMEM keyframe, it will cause the named clip to be loaded at that keyframe. Q, turning on Q will read and display the current clip timecode. If this trigger is active on an EMEM keyframe, it will cause the loaded clip to be queued to the queue timecode at that keyframe. Both the load and queue event information can be updated by toggling the event button and then modifying the keyframe. An active play event will initiate a play command at a keyframe. An active stop event will initiate a stop command at a keyframe. The gang and loop control buttons similarly will control those functions within a device if the corresponding events are active on specific keyframes and those features are supported by the device. 
to use macros to control an external device, start recording the macro and press any of the device control buttons in the control menu or on the panel system bar to control the machine. The macro will replay the buttons as recorded. With any external device, it may be necessary to add suitable delays between button presses when recording a macro or adjust keyframe times when building timeline effects to allow for an external device to respond. As an example, it is often necessary to add delays between a clip load and a play command to ensure the clip is loaded prior to the play command being sent. Failing to do so may cause the clip to not play at all or to play late depending on the device being controlled. This completes the external device control tutorial.